Hi, this is Nianta Spellman with Rainforest Partnership, bringing to you Our Planet, Our Future, a video podcast presented by Rainforest Partnership. Find us at www.rainforestpartnership.org and on social media. Join us as we bring interesting and compelling guests to talk about the environment, climate change, and rainforests. I'm Nianta Spellman with Rainforest Partnership, and this is Jose Valdivieso of Conservacion y Desarrollo, which also has an entity called Aroma Ecuador, and he's going to talk about both of those. Uh, we did a segment earlier where you learned a little bit about who Jose is, but he's going to talk more about cacao, take us through the history, tell us more about how where cacao comes from, where it originated, and uh, about chocolate that we all enjoy and love so much. Oh, hi, 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 Anta. Uh, nice to have you here here in the center. Okay, here we're we're going to explain that that will be the origin of, of the domestication of the cocoa. Five thousand and five thousand five hundred years ago, they find out in these bottles. Uh, the scientists in the 1990s they find out in these bottles cocoa and uh, chile inside. So they've been using, already mixing the cocoa and the chili 5,500 years ago. This temple that maybe, or when we know our scientists, we say that most of the Americas have this kind of temple. <clears throat> they were in this temple, they find out these bottles. So when this you is see, an archaeological site. Yes, an archaeological site that is, is near to Vilcabamba, has the most beautiful hotels and everything, where the people live more than 120 years old. Everybody lives more than 120 years. That maybe that because that a lot of things come from them. They come, the, the cure of the paludismo come from their Vilcabamba, the cure of paludismo, uh, the cocoa, the aguacate, the avocado, uh, now the chile and the cocoa, one hour from this place, going down to the Amazonas, Marañón and then Amazonas, to go to the Atlantic Ocean. And so these bottles, these earthen bottles are very interesting. And you're saying that they were found buried yeah. in these uh, archaeological sites. They're going and in the year 2000, uh, with, a, with a French and another American group, they find out the carbono 14, carbon 14. They find out this 5,500 years uh, ago that they were using, it was already domesticated, the, the, choco, the cocoa. They were using cocoa. And then you actually showed us a little bit more about... Uh... Yeah, and then the cocoa, the cocoa, where we find the cocoa, was in this place here, okay, in the south of Ecuador, north of Peru. Okay, it's a climate, a little bit chilly. Chile, it's like more than 600 meters, that means 18,000 foot up. They find it mostly the mountain going down to the Amazon. That would be the domestication of the cocoa. And then the cocoa, they come, they were moving to Mesoamerica, they move in to look the now the place that is Mexico, and even even going down and going to Venezuela and other parts of the <clears throat> of the Amazon. The archaeological part was here here in the south, and then in the fifteen in the fifteen twenty eight, the the cocoa went to Europe. And they that's when it the went cocoa. everywhere else. Now. Yes, but everybody was having the cocoa like normally, especially in Mexico. They were using cocoa. And Ecuador, in Guayaquil, that was very so important of Guayaquil, they have the cocoa ready in the 1500s. In that way, they sent the first cocoa. They were going to the Aztecas by the Spanish to control the Aztecas. Because Aztecas, they love the cocoa, and they used to pay the Aztecas three, three beans for each month of work, of cocoa. That was the, the, so expensive so in that that's time. So worth a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money. That would be, imagine that in that time. It would be a lot, a lot of money. Even now, now it be, means do dollars, yeah. means money, no? Yeah. You can maintain. And then in this kind of boat, uh, the Spanish and the, and the, the Europeans, they came to America, Spanish, they didn't exist, Spain. It was, it, it was a peninsula Iberica, but there were French, Germans, and everybody inside. It was the emperor, Carlos V. They used to go in these boats, it, really, to Mexico and then to, to Europe. Yeah. That, that was, and what happened, how there was the domestication in this picture, you will find, there were the people who lived in the Amazon, 
bringing the cocoa up to the mountain, out to the mountain, that is very, very cold, and then going to the coast, and then going by the ocean to our place. You, we have to remember that the Incas, the, the roads of the Incas were, were in, in long, more than 7,000 uh, kilometers. kilometers yeah. Imagine that, they have communication all day. Right. Uh, Mexico is not 7,000, it's 3,000. It's yeah, it's not very far, it's very, very, very nearby. Yeah. And they were connected. The genes of even the people is connected. So, there, then, the cacao's been around a yeah, long time. Yeah, a long time. Here we have another, another picture that shows you a little bit how it was in the, in the, we start here in the, in the uh, uh, 1500s and then to go to the, our, our time and how was the production in Ecuador, how we grow and how Ecuador will, uh, was selling to Europe and to the United States and to the, to the, to the towns and the communities that were using already cocoa. That's a history, will be the temporary history uh, starting the 1500s to the 2000s. And of course, when they were using it, the ancient people using it, they weren't using sugar in it. No. The cacao no. was used in a very different way. Yeah, the cacao is supposed to be the first time they put in sugar was the Franciscanos in the place of La Roca in Spain. Yes. They went and they put sugar. And then there were a couple of nuns in other parts in Andalusia, they put it even milk. I started making with other things, yeah. So. Yeah. We often even, think of uh, yeah. chocolate as we know it, but we know. Yeah, even that, that time, imagine what was important, the Pope uh, for the Catholics was illegal to eat something at night. Yes. But the only thing you can eat at night was chocolate. <laughs> 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 only chocolate, that's it at night. Eight o'clock in the morning, night, only chocolate, that's it. You cannot why, eat anything else. Really yeah, you know, it was very, very, very yeah. intelligent. Then here we came for another space there's another room of this center of investigation and development. And we came with some studies that we made is the origin of, of the biological origin of the cocoa. The DNA or the biological origin of the cocoa because we find out a lot of genes that they are in the coordinates that were very far away from the, from the center. And these ones are the genes, normally the genes that we find in the cocoa in all parts in the world but we started finding new genes. You have all these genes in Ecuador. That means that, that the Kokoi was from the, from the Yasuni, the most diverse part in the world. Uh, this one will be, that's the phenetic part, phenotypical part that is in the forest. That's the Sunny Isla. It was there in Sunny Isla and Yasuni, where was the, really the first cocoa trees there. And we, but we keep making studies. We already make a study of more than 7 million trees 70 million, million trees. trees. Yes. Which is mind Yes. And in the 17, there is 5,000 trees already that were finishing the studies. And then wow. we hope someday to the next generation we'll have. That's why we have to protect the, the forest. Yes, because because we have to lose. Go. Yes, we have to lose all the genes and all the information that the world needs, the new kids needs, our kids, your family, all of us. This, this is, is incredible. And this one will be the first map of, of, of flavors of the cocoa. Okay, the, 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 the old maps is saying that the cocoa doesn't have any flavor. It right. was only tobromine. And the new map, uh, uh, we find out with a lot of people who are very, yeah, I know that now the, in the city places is difficult, but if you are talking with, with persons that lives in the forest, they find out so many flavors around and they can say how many are. In this one, in this one we made with 16 flavors, but it was so famous, this map, there's a lot of people came and says, no, we find out more flavors. And that, that 16 was not enough. Not enough. Because it did not capture the true diversity of what cacao had, the flavors it held. Yes, It was much, yes. much wider, yeah. Even, even here we're messing with the people. The people who live there, their flavors, everything, there is more. And this, that's why we make the flower of the cocoa. That's the flower of the cocoa. That looks very much like the flower of the cocoa yeah. tree, yeah. The cocoa tree, that's the flower. And in the flower, we put a lot of holes that the people could put the new flavors that they find. Because each person is a genius and they know things that we don't know. It's like, don't close the door, open it. Yeah. We have to open our brain, open our mind, open our thinking, our feelings to find out more things. And that's the flower of the, of the flavors. Well, the other interesting thing is that this map here and then in this 
particular uh, panel that you have shows you all the associations of cacao producers that you work with. Yes. And yes. they each have different flavors, but mm -hmm. there are different people that you work with. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So different people. Here are represented 12,000 people. People that produce of 120,000 persons producing in cocoa in Ecuador. Here there are more than 12,000, 12,000 to 15,000 in association, in the kind of association. All the flavors that we find here, all the flavors you find here, if you don't know, because it's very hard to know so many flavors, yes. we put them here in these glasses. That's right. You are saying that there are 500 flavors. It's not just the 16 that you have, no. not just the wheel, but you have 500 flavors here. And you even have coca, yeah. which is a holy plant uh -huh. for indigenous people. And it's normally, yeah. yes. and it's in the forest, in the Amazon, it's normal, it's like about, about the leaf. Yeah, but it's everywhere, it's everywhere and uh, it's normal. But yeah, the coco takes that taste too, yes. because it's around, it's, it's in the forest. It's pretty amazing if you think about it. Yeah. And yeah. you have all sorts of flavors here. Um, you have anise there, and you have... Uh, you have anise. You we, have maca oh. there, and azúcar in polvo, sugar product. Because even the sugar, the sugar tastes totally different. The There's salt, the salt is different. different. Yes. The heat from the parts of... Different parts, Anise, yes. there's a lot of... Even the, the milk, each kind of milk of each cow smells different and it's different. The milk, the abeja, the honey, even who is the honey, it will smell different. Yeah, the coffee, the wine, yeah. It's to teach the people because if you are talking with the people, with people who live here in the forest, they don't know what's wine. And they have to teach them what's wine. They don't know what's a dry fruit, like I know, like a grape. Yeah. Then you have to show them, them what's a grape because they don't need the grapes they need another fruit that they have in their forest oh, right. it's totally different yes. what is this telling us <clears throat> they, they, this one tells you how you tone yeah takes ah, it the, your yeah does, how where it uh, how where, and where, when we're yeah that means it's sweet amargo how do you say amargo bitter uh, bitter and uh, salty yeah. and acid yeah how, which part of your tongue uh, exterior. Discover exterior, find out one part of your tongue. That that's this that part is saying that. And then of course you have uh, the factory here, um, the chocolate factory. Where yeah. You said you made here inside we have a factory. We're on top it is nobody there. Here is a factory that we produce here seventy tons of of, of cocoa uh, yearly. Seventy tons. Yeah. We use here uh, fluid air. Uh, all cocoa here we. We turn in a, we, we, we cook it in fluid air. There's a technology was, that was patented in the United States. And most of the machinery are from the United States. That was in California and, and the Seattle, Washington State. There was the patent and they, they, they use a lot of fluid air. You're cooking uh -huh. in the air. That's different. That gives you a different. It, it tastes more, it has more flavors. And it's different, the cocoa yeah. is different, and it's very good. It maintains the flavor more. It maintains the, the flavor more, yeah. yeah. You put it up, the flavors, yeah. in fluid air. Then the drum, the drum is another kind of way to, to, to cook uh, the, 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 the beans. It's a round, and you have the, the here the hot part, and it's different, it's a, the broom, that, yes. uh, that's a different kind. That was made more in Germany, and in America was more the fluid air. They start with the popcorn and all the oh, things. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah it's right. the popcorn theory, yeah. yeah the yeah, flitter, yeah. that's flitter. And then you have a place where you show how it's uh, a little bit of how the process of cacao goes. Yes, yes. And here we have here a lot of collections that the people come with their chocolates. Yes. Yeah, a lot of people come with their chocolates. Um, and they live here and we put here, the, the chocolate is full, we put them back there in the line because we need the people to, to taste chocolates that they're from other parts of the world. And we put here the trademarks to show that they, they exist. Yes. In this part here too is very important for us because here in this one, in this one you can find is a paint that, that says Alfred Mitchell in the 1800s. He find out the taxonomy of the cocoa that the cocoa was a different plant than all the other ones. He was a German guy. He was a German guy. He used to paint in wood. This one is wood. 
yeah, and he used to paint in wood, and and that's why it's in wood. That was the way because normally they put in paper, but they, he used to use wood to paint. And then and that's the German government has loaned this yeah. to yeah, they give to us, yeah, yeah. yeah. They give to us, and it's very 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 very, very good uh, document. Yes, and to teach the people who comes here, no, right. And then it comes like this one here, here uh, this, this chocolate, yeah, this one's color. This one's guitar. That guitar company came to us to give them their chocolate. Right. Yes. Let's go to another another room. We have here another room. Okay. And so you do these tours for a lot of people. A lot here. of people come here. A lot of people, universities, scientists, they come here, and then we show this one is a nursery place that we grow well, at least uh, one million plants yearly, that's in the Amazon. Taking all the DNA in that way we can use, and you go there, you find Guerra Zeta, uh, War Zeta, it was a movie of zombies, and you will find there why this plant doesn't get sick. Yes. I say, why? Because they're part of the, the, the land, was there. Yeah. That's why it doesn't get sick, and they don't it get sick. There. Yeah, yeah, and you, if you put another plant of cocoa that is from another part, they get sick right away and will die. And yeah. you've spent a lot of time figuring out a lot of time. these trees only belong in that part mm -hmm. of the Amazon and not somewhere That will else. be, if you are talking about these, these groups of individuals, there are five, here you will find the five individuals because they have a, 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 poly, a cross pollinization. Yes. It has to be all the family together. Yes. In that way they have the, the cross pollinization and then you can have the cocoa. In that kind of cocoa. Right. That means that means, yes, it's a very, very old cocoa. Because with the new cocos, the old ones, they live alone. Oh, really? Yeah. They don't cross. They don't need, they don't need cross, cross, wow. cross uh, pollinization. I had no idea. This one is cross pollinization. That's very important. You know, the family, here, if you have here the family, yeah, you, you need to cross. They, they, to cross and they survive. They have oh, to wow. cross and they produce the cocoa. If, if you have only one individual, you, know, you, you almost you don't want to have cocoa. Wow. It's very, very queer, this kind. And then we come to this place. We show how the cocoa comes from. That's a flower. It's a very, very small flower. Very, very tight, tight flower. And it's very yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it's very, very nice flower. And very small. And then it's come this big, big, big fruit. It's a huge fruit if you are comparing to the flower. Yeah. The flower will be this size. And look, it will be like that. That will be the flower. And this one is the fruit, this flower. You open it, you open it, and then you ferment it, and then you dry it. Yeah, you have to move it to maintain all the fermentation. You dry it, and you put in this kind of, of uh, sack. sack. And you sell it like that to make chocolates. This kind, this is, this is the way that the ferment are bigger than these ones. And normally, normally is for, for a tone each one. Yeah, yeah each one a tone is going to pass at least three days to five days, going to one place to another place to have a good, a good fermentation. Then when they finish, they go to these dryer machines, to these dryer things, and they will be dry in two days, at, at no, no more in this kind of, of dryers, or directly to the sun, no? Yeah. That's very good because you have the acid, the rain acid rain, because the whole world has rain acid, and will be a perfect, a perfect product. And that's, that's this part, and then we come, the tours, we give the tours that we find everybody who is in the forest, teaching the people, look, the forest, the cocoa is a forest. Yes, it's part yeah. of the forest, it grows in the forest. It grows in the forest, it's part of the forest, and you can go there to make a lot of trips and, uh, and to make ecotourism there, and you enjoy a lot. And if you go to the forest, you actually get to taste what a cacao fruit. Yeah. It's you can taste small. it. It's about that small, but yeah. I think it's one of the tastiest fruits. Yeah, it's very tasty. And and it's, it's I think this is one of the tastiest fruits there is actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't get used very much. No, we don't use because too much. cacao is yeah. the hundred percent of the yeah is very is more than the fruit, and yeah. And then and then we have this space here. This space is the the, the persons come and you have the flower. It's a huge one. The huge flower that the, everybody sits around this table and they do a and taste they taste in the chocolate for each part of Ecuador. And you have here the huge flavor, uh, flower that you can find out the new flavors and to put them.
to understand what the flavors are. Yes. And you sense that's the more of the center. Now we can go to the store to aroma. Yes, let's go to the store. You to aroma. Wait, can we walk that way? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Let's go to aroma. Please see side. Please. Here you have plants of coffee. That's coffee plants. All that are coffee. So we plant and then we're going to, to aroma. And this oh. is where people can come and enjoy? Yeah. The the, yeah, you saw the factory, and then yeah. the factory, they come first here. Here you make all what the factory makes, it goes here and goes to the stores around, around Ecuador. And uh, some things around there, around Holland, United States, Canada, the place that we've been sending all the time, Germany, Switzerland. Uh, sending to, to a lot of places. How we do that, we, we have the base of this, the chocolate, and then we have a genius girl, the genius person's man doing it, especially the chocolate. Yeah. And the great combination. Yeah. And look here, you have the pink, one pink. You have the famous pink chocolate. That will be the famous pink chocolate. That is the normal color of the cacao. You've been listening to Our Planet, Our Future, brought to you by Rainforest Partnership. From Nianza Spellman and the Rainforest Partnership team, thank you for joining us. <laughs>